Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to uh, my channel. For today's video, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a hot minute. I'm going to do a bunch of product updates. I'm starting to keep better track of the products that I try. So I have a monthly drawer where every time I try a new product, I put it in that drawer for the month. So this is all the stuff that I tried in September. I know it's towards the end of October, but I don't plan on doing this video every month. But as soon as a drawer accumulates enough stuff, is when I will do the updates. So these are going to be like a lot of mini speed reviews. Some of the products I might have done a dedicated review on before and I feel like I have info to update you guys on. Some I've never even mentioned using. I have a good number of drugstore products because I mostly do dedicated reviews to luxury products but I also try a lot of more affordable products on this side as well. There's a lot of products that maybe I've mentioned in passing that I told you guys I would update you on and here we are. Here's the updates. It's a lot of products. Get a snack, get a drink. Let's get into it. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys, which is exactly what this video feeds. All of these products I've mostly tried on the side. I haven't even done dedicated videos on these and I'm just really excited to talk about some products that I've been playing with. So let's start off with skincare. I tried a lot of e.l.f. skincare recently. So we're gonna start off with these, the e.l.f. makeup removing cleansing cloths. Do not buy these, these are terrible. I was hoping these would be good because they are so cheap, but these irritate my skin like no other. I mean, I can only speak for myself, but not only do I feel like it doesn't remove makeup that well, but it also just leaves my skin feeling really bothered after I use it. My face hurts after I use this. So I'm gonna finish these up by just using them to clean up my swatches on my arms for videos and cleaning up my makeup area. But this isn't touching my face ever again, so I do not recommend these. Um, on the contrary to that though, I've been playing with the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Sleeping Mask and I'll talk a lot about the Holy Hydration products in a minute, but this is awesome. I love the scent of it. It smells so fresh, so it does have a fragrance. If you are fragrance free, then stay away from this, but I do enjoy putting this all over my skin at night and I wake up in the morning and my skin truly does feel hydrated and sleeping masks can be very, very pricey. So I'm excited that this is a great affordable alternative. I've been enjoying it a lot. I haven't noticed any breaking out really. So at least from this, I've had breakouts, but I've been playing around with a lot of different products. I don't think it's from this. I'm very impressed with the e.l.f. skincare, I've got to say, and this is awesome if you've been looking for a sleeping mask, especially now that winter's coming. I also really do enjoy the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Eye Cream. I find this is very hydrating prior to applying makeup. It feels quite cooling as well. I think they did a fabulous job with this. It truly does feel very high quality to me. I've messed around with a lot of different eye creams because my eyes can be sensitive to eye creams. This one I really, really like, and I wasn't gonna mention this in today's video, but the e.l.f. Holy Hydration Face Cream with SPF 30 is also awesome. I've done a reel and a TikTok on this, so that's why I wasn't gonna mention this, but the e.l.f. Holy Hydration line in general, amazing. If you're looking for great hydrating skincare for an affordable price, I've really been enjoying that. And I'm quite picky with skincare. Typically, I like to go on the higher end to luxury for skincare because my skin is so sensitive. But the e.l.f. has really, really impressed me. Okay, let's move on to face primers. I have three that I tried out. So the first one is the e.l.f. Mint Melt Cooling Face Primer. This is very similar to the Milk Hydro Grip Primer with a kind of minty cooling effect to the skin. I like it. I'm not a huge fan of sticky primers to begin with. I don't necessarily notice like, oh my gosh, this makes my makeup last longer. I, I really don't know. But I do like the feeling of this. I think it's a nice face primer if you like the cooling sensation. This is lovely. And if you like something that is sticky to the skin and leaves a tacky base, I really do recommend this if you're looking for something more affordable. e.l.f. has really been impressing me. If you couldn't tell, I made an e.l.f. order, so I have a lot of products kind of thrown in here, but this is also a very nice primer. Next up, we have the Revlon Photo Ready Rose Glow Hydrating and Illuminating Primer. I like this. I don't love it. I feel like it leaves a little bit of glitter on my face. I like a glowy primer, but I don't like glow 
glowy primers that leave sparkles and I feel like this leaves very very fine sparkles I don't know I just I would rather put this all over my chest as opposed to before makeup I really hate the sparkles on the face so this isn't for me it feels nice it's semi hydrating but I don't like the sparkles that it leaves I think this is pretty all over the chest though and it feels really really lightweight actually let me just show you while I'm here I prefer not to even use this on my face but on the chest Ugh, it feels nice. I'm sorry, you can see my bra. <laughs> it feels nice and hydrating and it gives a very healthy glow to the chest. So I like it for that reason, but I don't like it so much for my face. So the next primer that I had is everything that I wanted the Revlon to be. So this is the Milani Glow Drops Radiance Boosting Serum. I think this is fabulous before makeup if you have dry skin. It's pretty hydrating. It's not the most hydrating face primer that I've used, but it leaves a gorgeous glow to the skin before makeup. So if you're looking for something to be a little bit more illuminating, I really do enjoy the illumination that this gives. And it's not like a metallic finish. It literally is just a gorgeous, healthy, glowy look. So I do recommend this. I really like this. I think Milani has been killing it lately. This is a good one. So this is what it looks like. And it has a thickness to it, so it does leave the skin feeling a little bit tacky. Look at that. That's what I mean by the gorgeous glow that it leaves. So the next product that I have is from Kyer Weiss. This is the cream foundation and I need your help. If you've tried this foundation, how do you like to apply this? I'm not a big fan of this. I mean, I have it on my skin right now. I think my skin looks really good, very natural, but I feel like I'm about to hit pan on this and I've used this a total of probably three times. It feels very, very dry in the pan. And the only way that I can get it to really spread onto the skin is if I warm it up with my fingers and apply it with my fingers. I tried to use a brush today. It didn't work. I've tried it with sponges. I get absolutely no coverage. It can't seem to pick up the product if I use a tool. The only way that I can apply it is with my finger and that takes forever. I think I spent like five minutes just trying to apply this on all areas of my face. So I like it almost for more so spot concealing because when I get it on my finger and I put it on my spots, it's perfect. I like it for that. But as an all over foundation, I can't seem to figure this out. It just feels so dry. It doesn't look dry on my skin. Now that I've worked all the product out, it looks quite nice, but the application on this, I'm just not a fan of. Okay, so I did get to try one of the foundations that Tati recommended when she first came back. This is the Catrice True Skin Hydrating Foundation. This is hard to get your hands on. I got super duper lucky that they sent this to me in PR. I don't love this. I think it's a little bit too thick on me. It looks too cakey. It's just not what I prefer. I do prefer more of like a medium coverage foundation with a natural finish. This is full coverage with a lot of cake. In my opinion, if I apply just a little bit, I can get it to look pretty, but I just, I don't love the finish of this. It looks really cakey to me and very makeup -y. You can tell I'm wearing makeup. Now, this looks really good on camera because it's so full coverage and I do like to wear it for that or for Instagram tutorials but as far as every day this is a bit much for me. I can see where Tati's coming from and where the popularity is coming from because it is quite perfecting but it's too perfecting. It's too much for me. Okay let's move on to concealers. I tried three major ones, but I pulled out the one size turn up the base concealer because I haven't talked about this too much on my channel. I didn't get to do a review on this, but this is a solid, solid concealer. It's kind of in the middle of the road and everything. It gives more medium to heavy coverage, but it feels lightweight enough on the under eyes. It's a generally good concealer. My under eyes don't look too dry. I don't have anything bad to say, but I also like don't have anything amazing to say. It just kind of... It works. It does what you want it to do. I'm not overly impressed by it. I think it's a great concealer and I definitely am happy that I picked it up. I'm not like sad about buying this, but what I like a lot better is the ABH Magic Touch Concealer. Something about this is more hydrating to me. It blends out a little bit easier. This is a bomb concealer. It's so skin-like. I also in this month tried out the Tom Ford concealer, but I ended up reviewing that, so I didn't put it in this video, but this is very similar to the Tom Ford. The Tom Ford's a little bit more illuminating, but these kind of have a similar consistency. They spread out very nice. They look just as good on the under eyes. This is $30. The Tom Ford was 90, so I really like this. This was definitely 
my favorite concealer that I've tried recently. Now, I, I love the Tom Ford concealer, don't get me wrong, but I'm not gonna buy it again for $90. This is really, really good. So I tried this on your guys' recommendation. This is the e.l.f. Sheer Tint Finishing Powder, and I got mine in light medium, and it's, it's a little too dark for me, but the powder itself is beautiful. You guys were right. I do think it's a little bit heavy for my under eyes, but as far as setting the rest of my face, it really did smooth everything out. This does not not look like an elf setting powder. It gives a beautiful finish to the skin. I'm very impressed with this. This is a great purse powder because it's not too expensive, so I don't worry about it too much, but it really does suck in the oils of the skin. It smooths the surface. It's a really solid powder. Highly recommend this if you're looking for an affordable powder. I got a PR package from Jouer that I'm slowly working through, but this really impressed me. This is the Jouer Light to Medium Bronzer Duo. I love this. At first, I thought that the light bronzer was going to be too light, but it really smooths onto the skin so beautifully. It applies like butter, and it does add a nice natural definition to the skin, but when I want something a little bit deeper, there is a deeper shade in here. I think the colors of these are beautiful. I think they look so smooth on the skin. It, they apply seamlessly. Really solid bronzer duo. It's just, when I find a bronzer I like, I just can tell right away just by the way that it applies by the tone of this not too warm it leans a little bit more neutral and I like a warm bronzer don't get me wrong but a neutral bronzer will always be a little bit more flattering on me at least just because it also adds a little bit of contouring and definition to the face so this is a beautiful bronzer duo I like that there's two options Really like this one. Okay, you guys, I used this so many times to try and understand if I liked it or I didn't like it. And I think I've come to the conclusion that I don't like this. So this is the Pixie and Promise collaboration, the Shape Shifter palette. And mm, I mean, there's things I like about it. There's a lot of things I don't like about it. Generally speaking, I just don't like the formula of the powders in here. The highlighters look chunky. The powders are a little bit more drying to the skin. And I see where they were going with this palette. I see why these colors are here. I see the purpose of them, but I just don't like the quality of these powders. They're too dry. The highlighters themselves look really chunky on the cheek and almost dry in a weird way. I've also tried this as eyeshadow and I've gotten really pretty eyeshadow looks. This palette is actually quite versatile in the colors, but truthfully this just doesn't feel like high quality to me. You know, the powders are not very good in here and um this had potential. If the powders were creamier, you could do a lot with this. Maybe even a little bit more pigmented with the brightening shades to really allow contour and highlights. I did like the contour shades here and the bronzer shades. I thought that was nice, but these are really the only two shades that I truly enjoy. The rest of the palettes, like, it's just not that good. I don't know. It's not really worth talking about. I tried a lot, a lot, a lot of blushes. <laughs> So let's start off with the blush palette that I'm wearing right now. This is the Sigma Corderosa cheek palette And I lusted after this for a long time before it finally entered my hands And I've got to say I didn't love it as much as I thought it would. It's a decent palette, but it's not amazing So I really wanted this because Corderosa was one of my favorite blushes ever I had it in an individual so that's why I wanted this palette in the first place But it's just an okay palette and now that I know how to use it and what to expect I like it a little bit more. I'm wearing Pashima all over my cheeks with a little bit of Senorita just to add a little glow. The colors in here are beautiful. It's just if you apply too much these are kind of hard to blend out. They have almost a little bit too much pigmentation and I can work with too much pigmentation as long as the formula is blendable but the formula here just isn't blendable enough for me so I have to use a very light hand. Like I said I just love the colors in here and I'm able to make this work now that I know what to expect but I feel like the Corderosa and the individual is a better formula it's more blendable these are just they're, they're hard to blend I don't know I love the colors but not in love with the formula another disappointing blush palette is the NARS high profile cheek palette I just cannot get into this palette it's very disappointing because I love so many NARS cheek palettes and I loved this packaging I thought it was so pretty but this formula is just not NARS's best all of these shades in my opinion on the cheek kind of look the same 
they take too much building up I really struggle to get the product onto my brush I really have to dig and it's just not worth the price that you pay in my opinion this might as well just be one giant blush because they literally look all the same application isn't that easy it doesn't just glide onto the cheek the finish of the it's pretty on the cheek but you can check out my review I gave it a pretty negative review and I'm just putting this back in here to tell you it still is just as bad as when I first tried it. Definitely don't recommend this. It's a shame. I love the packaging so much. I did do a review on these but I did want to update you because I haven't talked about these since my review. These are the Tom Ford Shade and Illuminate blushes and I still love these as much as the day that I got them but they're like $90. Something ridiculous like that for two blush shades. So here's the pros. Very blurring on the skin. Apply so easily. Fabulous formula, gold standard, but way overpriced. Tom Ford lately has been really wishy-washy for me. It's like, I don't want to recommend these to you because they aren't worth $90, but they really are a top-of-the-line formula, so it's just up to you. So yeah, I'm still shamefully loving these is the point that I'm trying to get across. So I also took a dive into Wonder 2 blushes. They sent me a few shades in a PR package. I just actually tried a different color the other day, but the formula on these blushes is decent. So this is the shade Rosy. It's a little bit warmer than I thought, but these are a big, fat, like, okay. You know, they do the job. They're kind of just like a blush, like a run-of-the-mill blush formula. I really have been liking Wonder 2's formulas, though. Side note, this is made in Italy. I find their powders to be really beautiful. Their lip products are beautiful. So the blush itself, I'm not super in love with, but I just wanted to talk about it because Wonder 2 as a brand is underrated. I've been enjoying their products a lot. So, yeah. Wonder 2 has decent blushes and they're a decent price as well. I have one highlight palette to talk about. This is the Sigma Glow Kissed Highlight Palette and it's a bit too much for me. I think it's too metallic. <laughs> If you like a really, really blinding highlight, honey, you have found the palette for you. This formula has so much coverage and it's a true metallic formula. I think this would have been a bestseller in like 2018. Back in the day, it didn't matter how good or bad your makeup was applied. If you had a blinding highlight, your makeup was good and you would get complimented. It's a bit too much. This is a bit too 2016 to 2018 for me. Nowadays, I like a highlight that is buildable to metallic if I'm feeling it. But this this really isn't buildable. It's just like bam when you put it on. Nonetheless, I'm keeping it. I, I mean, I still kind of like this glow. It's pretty, but I gotta be wanting it. Like I'm wearing dramatic makeup, so I don't mind the dramatic highlight. But for every day, I, I don't. It's too much. <laughs> okay, let's move on to eyes. I have an eyebrow product that I've been loving. And by the way, I don't have any eyeshadow palettes in this video because I do a monthly eyeshadow palette rankings of all the eyeshadow palettes that I've tried. So that's where I update you on the palettes. So that's why they're not in this video. I love this. This is the best $3 you will spend. So this is the e.l.f. Bite Size Brow Palette in Neutral Brown. It's just eyebrow powders. So the first two shades are, I guess, waxes, and then the other two shades are brow powders. I really only stick to the brow powder side. I think the tone of the Neutral Brown is really, really good for my eyebrows. I find using powder on eyebrows the easiest way to do brows quick and easy. And these powders are really good. They blend good. They give a good amount of pigmentation. For $3, I just feel like you can't beat it. I'm not a big fan of the wax. I've tried a lot of ways to apply this. I've tried mixing the powder in. I've tried putting the, a spoolie in here and applying it to the brow. I find these to be useless. They don't hold the brow. They're too dry feeling to me. So I don't like the first two products, but this is only $3. So I don't care. This is a really good brow product to travel with and you have some good powders. I've been loving this. I've been using it a lot. I have a lot of eyeliners that I've tried. <laughs> like a lot. So let's start off with the Natasha Denona Macro Tech Eye Crayon. I picked this up when the Mini Zendo palette came out. So this is in the shade brown. I love this shade of brown. It is so rich and I love this eyeliner. I'm wearing it on my waterline right now. The pigment in this is just insane and it doesn't budge. It lasts a really long time. I think these are a great quality eye pencil. They maybe aren't the smoothest that I like, but once they're on and they set, they're not going anywhere. I love the richness right now that is in my waterline and it's really dark and it stays a long time. So I honestly consider getting more colors because these are so high pigment and long lasting. Natasha killed it with this. Um, another brown liner that I tried was the Fenty Beauty Fly Liner in Big Truffle. I love this. 
This also is an eyeliner formula that I want to continue and try other colors with. Really easy to apply. I love the applicator. It's nice and long. This shade I do not have anything like as far as liquid liners go. It's like a reddish brown. So it's it's not as versatile as you would think it would be because it's so red. It's not as flattering with a neutral eye. Like I thought about using it for today's look, but it really is, it carries too much red in it. But when it's the right look, I love this. It has a lot of pigment. It stays a long time. It's easy to apply and the color is really really unique. Of the holiday releases that this came out with, this is probably my favorite from Fenty. We have the Huda Beauty Life Liner. This is okay. The applicator is really really tiny. It's one of the tiniest that I've seen and mm, I'm okay with it if I really need detail work, but I'm not gonna use this to apply the whole eye line. <laughs> but I've been using it to get super close to my lashes or just to fill in some sparser area, so it's okay. I guess the applicator itself is quite unique, but I'm not in love with it. It's not my favorite formula itself. It's a bit too wet for me. Okay, the Natasha Denona Work and Set Cream Eyeliner in black. I want to like this but I, I can't because it's so dry, you guys. So this is one of the blackest cream liners and gel liners I've ever used, and when it's set, it's set. However, it's one of the hardest cream liners to apply because it's so dry. If you have mature eyelids, this is going to like skip over. It's not gonna give you a nice, smooth, easy line. It's so dry. I wanna mix some eye drops in here or something because even on my eyes, I have to keep going back. I had to fill in with liquid liner. It's just not an easy application. It's too dry. Can I say that? It's too dry. Um, can I say that again? It's too dry, but it's so black and it gives a true matte finish. So I use this first and I get a really great black wing. And then I go in with a liquid liner to just kind of sharpen everything. I have a love-hate relationship with this because this gives me the exact look that I'm looking for with eyeliner, but it is a struggle to get there. Okay, finally, lip products. I've been uninspired by lip products lately. I've just been digging into my collection. I really haven't that been buying lip products. It's the mask situation. It still is affecting me. <laughs> so lip products have been uninspiring to me. It's all about the eyes for me. But I tried this Patrick Ta lip gloss and she's expensive. It's a clear color mostly with some glitters in here. Gorgeous with a lip liner. Love this formula. It really makes the lips look plump and I particularly like this color. While I do like the formula, I don't feel the need to get this in other colors because there's something about this color that is so special. If you just add a skin tone colored lip liner and put this over top, juicy, glittery, glam, I love this. And then the last product that I have to talk about is the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm Heats. So these are the regular gloss balm formula. I think it's more so like the cream formula because there's no glitters or anything, but it has heat. <laughs> so it's a lip plumper. I love these. I think they are beautiful. They're comfortable. I like the way the heat feels. It's just a little spicy, but it's not overwhelming. Doesn't necessarily plump my lips. I, I really don't think so, but I love the formula to begin with. It's the great formula, but it just adds a little extra heat. So from now on, if I need a Fenty gloss, I'm going to buy the heat version just because I prefer it. If you're sensitive or do not like the plumping feeling on the lips, don't buy these, but I still am loving them. They're beautiful. They're not sticky super glowy, great formula. All right, you guys, there we have it. Those are my product updates, and I must say, I've tried a lot of stuff because my bin for next time is already starting to fill up, so there might be an updates video very, very soon. And let me know what you guys think of this style of video. Do you like the updates? Do you appreciate the speedy reviews? I feel like it's just a great way for me to review so many products all at once. That's all I have for today's video. Thank you so much for being subscribed to my channel and liking this video, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, guys, have a good one.